In a room with a spectacular view during CES 2024, Lattice Semiconductors was showing some of the products that will change the way we interact with a computer or watch TV. And the technology behind them can compete with the big names like Nvidia or AMD. Let's take a look. FPGA if you are a computer engineer or if you work in the semiconductor industry, you know what the acronym stands for. If you are a game player or if you drive an autonomous vehicle or if you work with state-of-the-art cameras, then you are probably using FPGAs without knowing it. FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Arrays. These are processors that have many unique qualities. For example, they can perform a large amount of processing within a limited space. They can be customized to execute specific tasks. They can be designed to operate in parallel for real-time data processing. But more importantly, they can do so with very low power consumption. And if the software engineer has different needs or is not happy with the results, the FPGA can be reprogrammed to perform any new function. Just think of FPGAs as the Legos of computer architecture, in which bricks can be stacked or dismantled according to the needs of the users. FPGAs have been around for over 20 years, but it is in the last few years that AI developers have paid more attention to this type of processors, as they can be used to perform many of the functions in machine learning that are traditionally done by more expensive GPUs, from Nvidia, AMD or Intel for example. Autonomous vehicles, drones or robotic systems require fast real-time processing to be effective. FPGAs can be used in these domains as they can handle streaming data in real-time without the latency often associated with general-purpose processors. Moreover, as the Internet of Things continues to grow, there is an increasing demand for processing data at the edge of the networks. FPGAs, with their low latency and ability to be reprogrammed for specific tasks, are ideal for edge computing scenarios. In fact, they can be used to process data locally, reducing the need to send a vast amount of data to the cloud. Because FPGAs are well suited for AI and machine learning applications, we can expect to see FPGAs becoming more integrated with advanced processors to handle complex neural networks and machine learning algorithms efficiently. This integration is already happening at corporate level. Xilinx and Altera Corporation were two companies specializing in FPGAs. Xilinx was acquired by AMD, Altera by Intel. Today Lattice is probably the leading company in FPGAs and they also work with NVIDIA in specific scenarios. Lattice was at the last edition of CES and we visited them at a suite at the Venetian Hotel, where they were demoing some of the upcoming consumer applications. The first demo shows how our eyes could replace a mouse in making selections from a menu in a computer application. You'll see a little menu pop up and I'm going to navigate the menu just by looking at it. So you see, like, as I look around, I can select certain things. So there you go. Now I, I've selected YouTube, but really I did this just with my eyes. So I'm, I'm actually going to increase the dwell time because we, you, you're supposed to wait, stare at a particular icon for one second before it gets selected. So I'm just going to increase that to let's say yeah, close to two seconds, just so it's a little bit slower, so it's easier to see. But uh, yeah, let's go hard drive. So I'm going to look at that, and then uh, yeah, downloads for example, and you see it shows downloads. Other demos were about programming very simple cameras with FPGAs while converting them in very sophisticated security systems or in cameras that can perform or ignore specific functions, like the amount of light that a camera can process. Well, here we're using an FPGA, so this is fully reconfigurable. It can fit basically any camera model, and you can even configure what the ISP does. Like, let's say there's some things, like let's say you don't need white balance for your camera for whatever reason. You can free that block up, and you have a little part of the FPGA to do something else. So this is really the flexibility of the FPGA is kind of demonstrated here. There's just an ISP here, but if you don't need everything, you can kind of 
take some things out and replace them with other things and make your camera do something more intelligent. You know, from experience, this could be AI, right? We've seen this happen before where like, oh, you know, we have an FPGA on this camera here. Is there some AI you can do? Absolutely. Because some models are very small to run and we only need a tiny fraction of the FPGA to do something more intelligent with the camera. Right? Uh, we compute these dots in 3D. So even as I kind of rotate my head around, things that are invisible to camera, we can still estimate their position. And this isn't a special camera. This is a very typical off-the-shelf industrial camera. It's not particularly expensive. So everything is done in parallel. So over here, we're bridging uh, three 4K cameras into a, a single feed. And as you can tell, there's really, there's no delay between any of the video feeds because everything is done in parallel. So FPGAs for this kind of signal processing in parallel, are really excellent devices for that. And then yeah, finally over here we have uh, simply something we call local dimming. But the idea is the problem with LCDs is typically the backlight has to be on all the time, uh, which gives this kind of, you know, dark gray appearance for areas that are supposed to be black. So you see now I'm turning it on and off. And the point of the FPGA here is it can analyze the video signal uh, continuously and adjust dimming zones on the backlight of the... Uh... And finally, a quick demo about how FPGAs fit in the car and how they can transform your hands into a TV remote control. Cars are full of networks to connect all the electronic pieces together. So this here, I believe it takes about 10 to 12 CAN bus signals and it can convert them to Ethernet to send them over a faster link to different computers within the car. Uh, so this is a very typical use case of FPGAs. So the way it works is you front of your TV, you do a gesture to bring up the menu and then you can move around your hand to select different uh, like arrows, direction, UI elements, and you pinch with your fingers to activate the, the UI element. So I can easily select, reach your hand, go to edit my watch list, to go see the cast. At the end of the demo, we were invited to touch the board to feel the heat. And to our surprise, there was none. The board was cool, just like the view from the room. <laughs>